QuickBooks Online 2022 generate reports after entering beginning balances. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file that we set up with our free 30-day trial. Holding down control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 1 to 5%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. in the business view as opposed to the accounting view if you wanted to go to the accounting view it's something you can do by going to the cog up to the right and down to the accounting view on down below we will be going back and forth to the accounting view either by toggling back and forth here or by jumping over to the sample file which is basically in the business view to get a look at the locations in the different areas so we've entered the beginning balances in prior presentations now we just want to generate the reports and we'll generate the reports so that you could possibly review the reports and kind of compare them to what you have if you're following along with us and just to get an idea of the printing of reports and the way we could format the reports so that we can present them as best as possible possibly at the end of the month end of the quarter end of the year so we spent our time setting up these beginning balances here into our system and uh, and now we're going to move forward after this entering actually transactions in the current period going forward which is we're going to imagine here january 1st 2022 and moving forward that will typically be done in the plus button with the forms under the customer vendors and employee area forms like the invoice the sales receipt the expense forms and so on and so forth so let's uh, open a few tabs up top. Right click on the tab up top. Let's duplicate the tab. Let's do it a couple times. Let's do it again. Right click on the tab again. Duplicate it again. And let's do it again. Right clicking on the tab again and duplicating another time. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet, the income statement, and the trial balance at least to start off with. And then we'll take a look at the transaction detail list as well. So let's start off with the balance sheet. We're going to be in the business overview when we're in the business view if we were in the other view accounting view it would be under the reports and then we're going to go to the one of our favorite reports which is the balance sheet of course the balance sheet report close up the hamburger and do a range change up top from 010121 to 123121 and Hold on a second, 1231.21 and run it. So there's our balance sheet. Let's go to the next tab to the right. And this time we're gonna open up the profit and loss, the P and L by going to the business overview again in the reports area and the profit and loss report. Do a range change from 010121 to 1231.21 and run that one. And then we'll go to the right hand side tab one more time and open up the trial balance report and also a very good report this is a really good report to kind of check out and i'm going to type it in to get their trial balance report to kind of check out where you stand as you're entering data because you could do so with one report basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement so let's review these real quick if we go to the balance sheet over here we're going to say this is where we stand as of a point in time we enter the data as of 12.31.21, and so this is what we have thus far in alignment with our beginning balances over here. It's broken out by the assets, the liabilities, and the equity. And so note that the net income down here will tie out to the income statement, tying out to the income statement here. And however, we want to start now as of the beginning of the next period which we only want balance sheet accounts we don't want any performance account or income statement accounts so i'm going to make one adjustment up top i'm going to make this as of 010122 to 010122 so that's the date that we're starting out with our balance sheet is set up thusly so there we have the balance sheet so let's go up top let's do a little bit of our customization we're going to customize this thing so we can print it out and let's just say that we want uh, no no sense let's take the sense out of it let's make the bracketed numbers uh, negative numbers bracketed let's show some red on it and let's go to the headers and the footers headers and the footers and we're going to say on the footer i'm going to get rid of the date the prepared time prepared report basis and then run that 
So just to clean it up a bit, looks a little cleaner. And then I'm going to go to the tab to the right and our profit and loss. This is in the prior period. So this is all the junk that was in there that rolled into the equity account. So what I, I don't need this stuff. I'm not concerned about it being there because it's going to roll into uh, the equity account. And as of the period that we want to work with, we will have no income statement or performance numbers. If anybody wants to know about the performance numbers prior to the cutoff date, in our case being January 1st, 2022, they should go to the prior accounting system because this one starts on January uh, 1st, 2022. So in other words, if I put the date range up top from 010122 to 010122 or even 1231, 3122, there's nothing in it. There's no data in it. That's what we want. Clean performance statement so we can move forward from it. And then, of course, we have the trial balance, which represents the balance sheet on top of the income statement. So right now, it's for the date range of 2020. Let's make this for 2021 to start off with 010121 to 1231.21 and then run it. So that shows the balance sheet accounts and then the income statement accounts down here that are also showing balance sheet on top of the income statement. And then I want to start our numbers, however, for the current period. So I'm going to bring this up one day to 010122 to let's say 123122 because there won't be anything in uh, this year. So the income statement accounts once again fall away and we have a trial balance with only the balance sheet accounts in it and the equity account then uh, having all the all the data from the income statement accounts. So that is that one. So let's go ahead and format this one. This one will print out as well. Let's customize it. And let's say we want to do the same thing without the cents. Let's put some brackets around it. Let's make it red. Let's go down to the header and the footer. And let's get rid of the date, the time, and the report basis. Run it. Now, I'm also going to take a look at the transaction detail list, which is a great tool to kind of figure out what you have done to review like someone else's work. If you're working as a supervisor or in like an instruction situation, great tool as well. So, for example, if your trial balance doesn't look like this, the next step is to drill down in the trial balance to look at the source document, see if there's anything wrong with it and the number that is different and possibly then to change the date range up top expanding the date range possibly to see if it's a date problem that the data input had an issue with to see if you could figure it out that way and then you could take a look at your transaction uh, detail list and compare that out because that'll that'll generally if your list starts if your list has everything our list has and you started at zero which we did because we started a new company file then the end result the trial balance should must be in balance so let's go ahead and go back to the hamburger. I'm going to do it in the middle tab because we're not going to be using this PL. Go to the reports. And should I scroll down there or just type it in there? Let's see if we could just type it in there. Transaction list by date. Transaction list by date. That's the one we want. It's all the way at the bottom if we were to scroll down. So this is a little bit faster. And we're going to do this for the time frame of 010121 to 123121 and run it. So you'll recall that this has all the all the transaction data that we have entered into the system uh, thus far. So this is all our beginning balance type of transactions that we entered. Now again, if you started at zero, which we did, and your data ties out to this data, then our ending balance has to be correct because this is the data that is the data input that, that created the ending balance information. You can also look at the journal entry report to see a similar kind of uh, breakout as well. So if if you if something is on this form that's not on your form, then you might want to expand the date range and see if it was just a date issue. If it was, you can drill down on that item and then change the date. If not, then of course you can add it. If something's on your form and it's not on this form, it's possibly that it was entered either incorrectly, which you can possibly ad adjust it by drilling down on it, or it was duplicated, in which case you can drill down on it and remove the transaction, you noting that in practice, you would want to be very careful about deleting transactions. But when you're first setting up the file, it's possible that you could have something that you'd, you'd want to delete or something like that. And uh, in the practice problem, it might be something you take a look at. 
Now, also, it's it's interesting to note what QuickBooks did with these transactions, because remember, going forward, we're going to be entering transactions that are normal transactions with forms, invoices, you know, expense forms, bill forms, and so on. But this time, we entered transactions with those beginning balance items, and then QuickBooks chose a form to enter the transaction with. So, for example, we've got the inventory starting values uh, that were put into place. These were using an inventory kind of form when we entered our beginning balances for inventory. So it looks like this item. So again, it used kind of a form to enter that. We didn't enter it in this kind of form, but that's what QuickBooks did in order to, to record the transaction. So QuickBooks will default to using the appropriate form to increase or decrease an account because the forms are tied out to everything else that are supposed to be connected within the QuickBooks uh, so that's what we did even when we did the beginning balances. These invoices, every time we entered the customer balance, they just entered an invoice here because the invoice is the thing that records a customer balance that is due and increases the accounts receivable and also allows it to create the sub-ledger report. When we entered the vendor balance, it created a bill because the bill is the thing that increases the accounts payable. It also increases the sub-ledger for the vendor that we owe money to. And then when we when you increased the cash, it entered a deposit form because the, and this time we entered a beginning balance in the cash because the deposit form is typically the form that increases the checking account. And then when it didn't have a form, it defaulted to just a journal entry. So some of the items that we put in place were just a journal entry such as I'm going to scroll down just a little bit more. You can't really see it here. Hold on a sec. Well, so, such as the credit card balance we entered as a journal entry. We also entered as a journal entry the, I believe, the purchase of the furniture and fixtures were uh, a journal entry because there's no standard form for those transactions. Now, it's not actually not giving me a, a form for these ones because they're a journal entry, I, 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 I guess. But let's go into these items here. I think it doesn't know which it, which number should it should show and which should be the split number because it doesn't have a form. But here's the journal entry for the furniture and uh, equipment. I'm going to go back out. I'll just open up the journal entries. Here is a journal entry. We entered a journal entry for the uh, the beginning balances for accumulated depreciation because again, there's no normal form that increases. It's usually an adjusting entry with a journal entry. And then this journal entry was for the loans. So when we put the loans payable on the book, there's no there's no form that really relates to that. It's not an accounts payable or bill form because it's a payable, a loan payable. And then this journal entry was for the adjusting of the beginning balances, the beginning balance adjustment. So those are going to be those items. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of formatting on this one. Let's customize this one out and say, okay, let's do the negative number thing, show the red, we can remove the cents. Yeah, let's keep the cents on this one. This is a detailed report. And then header and footer, date, time, prepared. Let's get the footer out and run it. Okay, so let's do our standard. I'm going to, I'm going to save these as a PDF and I'm going to print them to Excel. And I'm also going to make the Excel into one PDF file, just practicing how we might demonstrate this forms to somebody else and also get the practice documents that you can use to review if you so choose. So let's first export it as a PDF. So I'm going to export as a PDF and we get the PDF export. And I'm going to say save as a PDF, save it as a PDF. And there it goes. I'm going to put it into our folder here under the report. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it. So I'm just going to say drag it and drop it. I'm in a different browser than I was in prior presentations. Now this is the this is the Chrome browser. So I'm going to close that back out. Let's go to the second tab on over. Let's do the trial balance first. So I'll do the trial balance. Let's print this one out. So I'm going to say, uh, let's print it, drop down or export it as a PDF, save it as a PDF. I'm going to pull that into my folder, pull it into my folder, grab and drag it, drops it, dragged it over there, dragged it, dropped it way down into the folder. Doesn't seem very nice. Poor report. You're dragging and dropping it. I'm going to hit do it again. We're going to hit the drop down on this one, export to the PDF, save it as a PDF. 
and then I'm just gonna grab it, grab it and drag it, and then drop it. Ah, and it falls into the folder. Okay, so then we've got our folder here. I can make this our view. Let's make it a large view. Let's put that into another form. So called it reports, reports, and then I'll grab those. I'm gonna grab all three of them at one time. That's how strong I am. And then I'm gonna drag them, all three of them, and drop them. Da! Ah! And then right click on that one. And let's, we can zip it. I can zip that and send it to someone as a zipped file. So I'll send it to a zipped file. And then we can also do our Excel thing. If we wanted to put all these reports on one, on one file, we can put it on Excel and then use Excel and the cute PDF printer. So let's just practice that real quick. Export to Excel. I'll open this one up to start out with. Or maybe it would be easier for me to drag it first and then open it. Let's do that. I'm going to drag it first. I'm going to drag it first. I've got an idea that's going to be faster. I'm going to drag it first. It's going to save us like seconds. Seconds on the minute. Right click and I'm going to say this is called reports. And then I'm going to open it up. And this is the main doc that we're going to put all of our other reports into and then use it to create one PDF with all the reports in one PDF. So let's do that. I'm going to enable. I'm not going to go do much formatting here. I will take a look at the layout view and back on over just to see if it fits on a page. You could do formatting. We'll, we won't get into it we, at this point. So I'm going to then go to this next tab. Let's do it for the trial balance. Let's go ahead and export this one to Excel as well and then open it up. And then I'm just going to pull this one into my other report. I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to put my cursor on the triangle up top, right click and or just control C. And then I'm going to put that back on over this one by making another tab down below, double clicking on that tab, T TB for the trial balance. It's not tuberculosis, it's the trial balance. Put my cursor on A1 and then paste that one. And then one more time, this one we might have to do a little bit of formatting for it because it's a wide report. This one's a little wide, just like my uncle, a little wide. So we're going to say let's export this one and then open that one up. And then we'll enable the editing on that one. And let's copy it before we do any formatting. I'm going to copy the whole thing, putting my cursor on the triangle up top. Control C, copy it. Going back on over to the reports. This one's going to be the transaction detail. Trans, let's just call it TD, transaction detail. And then I'll put my cursor on A1 and paste it. Let's see if this fits on one page wide, but because I don't think it will, it's a little wide. So we got to do some formatting. I don't need this first, well, it does fit on one page wide. That's interesting, hold on a second. No, it doesn't, it's way too wide because it's over here. Okay, so let's see if we can fit this thing. Now this, notice that this, these tabs that are merged messes it up. That's why I don't like that, that whole merged thing. So I'm gonna unmerge that and I'll, I'll remerge it a better way. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna unmerge this stuff so I can delete some columns. Alignment, get rid of the merging of all the cells, alignment, stop that merging stuff. I'm going to take this, all this stuff, I'm going to pull it to the right so that I can delete column A because it's useless. Empty space. Right click, delete that. We're going to have to see this landscape if we want any hope of it fitting on one page. So I'm going to go to the page layout and let's go to the orientation and landscape it. Landscaping. And so then we can adjust some of our columns possibly. So I can, I can say this one, I can do it a, a little bit shorter and it would still be okay. That do I even need this number? I probably don't need these numbers at all. Maybe I hide them. And these one that says postings, that doesn't add much detail. Let's take these two, instead of deleting them, I'm just gonna hide it, hide. So I don't lose them forever, but remove them for the most part, and then let's make this one a little skinnier. We'll just do some trimming. A little a little off the sides, please. Just a little off the sides, I told him. I told my barber just a little off the side. Okay, let that looks good. Let's save it. And then I can re I can recenter these if we want them centered, but I'm not gonna do it with that merging thing. I'm gonna instead right click on it. 
and format the cells alignment and and center it across like that see way better let's do it this way this way and if it was like that I could I could have deleted stuff and it wouldn't have messed me up we're gonna say format the cells and then let's center across like that too and then this one one more time uno vase mas porfa freak four here we go center across all right let's save it again and then i'm just going to export it or print it as a pdf we're going to print the whole thing we're going to print it using the cute pdf printer making a pdf from it i want to print the entire workbook so i got three pages at this point that you could format them to center them a little bit more and whatnot but we're not going to do that right now and so there it is let's x let's print it saving it as a pdf it's kind of annoying they don't put those numbers here I'm, I'm pretty sure the desktop version does i hate to be you know i'm doing a little comparison it's hard not to compare when you're doing the thing but whatever we're going to save it here and say save that and then let's check it out so now we can give someone the zip folder we can attach the three documents we can give them the excel folder or we can give them this pdf that i don't know where it went because I, I just saved it I found it here it is so let's open it up right click I'm gonna open it up with my with the normal doc here again just so we can look at it and admire its beauty it's full of wonder this port report is wonderful full of wonder there it is and it's got the four three pages and this one shows even though it's landscape it shows up you don't have to tilt your head because it doesn't rotate at 90 degrees which is nice.